Vegans are paper value warriors. They don't understand that the bioavailability of nutrients from plant foods is questionable, and they also don't understand the various anti-nutrients and other negative things in plant foods that inhibit mineral absorption, vitamin absorption, element absorption, as well as they're just bad for their health in general. Uh, I like to bunch these into two groups. One, just the cognitive dissonance people who've never actually looked into vitamin bioavailability. Two, the people that input their stuff on chronometer every day. And, and chronometer is a very popular meal tracking a website that some vegans use to say, oh, look, paper value here and there, you know, with all the RDIs as if someone can actually tell me what the origin of the RDIs is and what it was based on, you know. Uh, let, let's get started on this and then we'll just kind of explain things that come up along the way. So I put into a chronometer like my height and weight and then how much activity Manly I do time. and it kind of gives me my base amount of calories that I need in order to maintain my weight. Uh, so that's kind of what this is all based on. But the RDIs for many things are going to be the same uh, no matter what weight you are, which is kind of silly, but that's just how things work. <laughs> so uh, let's check it out and see everything that I put in here and then see all the nutrition that I'm getting from this amazing smoothie bowl. All right. Ooh, that worked. Okay. So in here, I have... Whee! We're going for a ride in the blender, boys. Let's go. You know what's funny is all these vegans... They break out the Vitamix at 8 in the morning. Like, come on, guys. This is this cookie cutter stuff. Am, am, I, am I crazy? Like, this is ridiculous. Every single one does it. Let's break out the frozen fruit, you know? Three bananas. They were all frozen. And I had one peach that was frozen as well. We have a bunch of those we have to eat up. Uh, there's one pitted medjool date. Three cups of arugula. Doesn't matter what green you have. Just get some greens into you. Good to get them in early in the day when you blend them into a smoothie. It makes it super Bachelor easy. Wisdom, we have one you. tablespoon of ground flaxseed. And then we have a scoop of the Vivo Life uh, raw plant protein as well. And then just a half a cup of almond milk to get everything going. So that's everything that I blended into the smoothie. And then on top, you can see that I added uh, one cup of mixed frozen berries. And then we have two tablespoons of uh, mixed pumpkin and sunflower seeds. So one tablespoon each. And then there's some uh, dehydrated coconut on top as well. Let's look at everything that I'm getting from. All right, just, just off the top of my head, like we could talk about how impractical getting all this frozen fruit is, but you know, and, and how he froze it. And the only thing you might get from frozen fruit is vitamin C, which is inhibited by oxidation. You know, you lose it when you freeze foods. The flax seeds, you know, obviously all the seeds here, phytic acid oxalates. The plant protein, hemp has oxalates, phytic acid, various anti-nutrients. Um, I mean, the only maybe decent thing in here would be that there's no anti-nutrients in the fruit and that the coconut is a decent source of fat. This smoothie bowl. So it looks like there's 807 calories, which is quite a bit. But if I'm going to get in, how many do I need here? 2,300 you know calories in the day? Like you gotta start early. <laughs> you don't want to be, you know, it don't, you don't want it to be like 11 o'clock at night and you haven't had enough calories because that's when you make bad decisions, or at least me. Uh, so as we go down, we can see that we're already pretty close to like hitting a lot of RDIs. Uh, this is a pretty healthy, healthy smoothie bowl. Uh, but um, a couple of the highlights, yeah, healthy. you know, we can see like a lot of B vitamins are already nailed there. We're getting a lot of B6 from those bananas and then we're getting lots of k it's going to be from the from the greens he's like he's like highlighting it and seeing where it's coming from then he's like oh we're getting it from there he literally does not know where he's getting the vitamins from of course and then calcium some of it's going to be coming from the almond milk again because it is fortified but a lot coming from the greens and also the frozen berries didn't think of frozen berries having too much calcium in them Lots of minerals. You can see the omega-3s are nice and high as well because we got that flax seed in there. And then protein, you know, we're not gonna have trouble hitting our RDI of protein today, but I have a feeling we're gonna get a lot higher than whatever it is, the 63 grams or something like that. We'll probably get closer to 85 or maybe even 100, but you guys will have to stay tuned to find out. And then zinc, here's another one. What was the zinc from? So yeah, from the seeds either. and bananas as well. Oh, there we go. That is breakfast. So if you guys want to make this. Oh, man, where do I get started with this one? You know, what bothers me is how confident he is in all this information. He doesn't know anything about it. So we'll start with vitamin A. This study pretty much shows that the conversion rate of carotenoids to vitamin A is 
about 8% at best for any food. And you need to consume it with fat. And he's probably not consuming enough fat with that meal to absorb vitamin A. So you can pretty much throw vitamin A out the window. The nice thing is, you know, some people can convert carotenoids and they won't develop an extreme vitamin A deficiency. But, you know, vitamin A is one of the most important vitamins for your health. That's why when people talk about the zero-carb carnivore diet and consuming a lot of liver and how their skin improves, that's very important vitamin to have in excess, which is something people don't really talk about uh, yet. For vitamin K, the bioavailability is questionable from plant foods. You definitely need to consume fat to absorb vitamin K. And when vitamin K was consumed without fat, it wasn't really absorbed. But the problem is when they added fat in the form of butter, it was absorbed. But butter has vitamin K2 in the form of MK4. So this study is kind of contradictory. We don't know if the vitamin K2 increased drastically because of the butter has vitamin K2 or if the absorption rate was actually increased. So we don't really know that. But it's safe to say that on its own from plant foods, you can't absorb vitamin K. Uh, and this is the bioavailability of ALA converting it to EPA and DHA from flaxseed. And it does not raise blood levels of EPA and DHA. So, you know, it's crazy that this guy's so confident in these vitamins that he's getting them. Uh, we could talk about phytic acid and oxalates. Phytic acid impairs the absorption of iron, zinc, and calcium and may provo- promote mineral deficiencies. And oxalates do the same thing, but oxalates are more associated with calcium and magnesium, whereas phytic acid is iron, zinc, and calcium. So when he says, oh, I'm getting calcium from almond milk, almond milk is literally one of the highest phytic acid foods. It's literally like a slurry of phytates, and it's not being absorbed. This is what these people don't get. You're not absorbing the mineral. I find it whether it's, you know, they just don't know. I I don't want to call it arrogance. I don't want to call it stupidity. They just don't know how much Phytic acid and oxalates inhibit mineral absorption. And for them to be so confident in saying that, it drives me crazy. You know, almond milk, you know, you could Google almond milk phytates. Is there anything else we have to go into? I mean, we could, what, that protein powder? You know, if you, you could just Google hemp protein anti nutrients. And although hemp protein might have a high bioavailability compared to other sources of plant protein, it has many negative anti nutrients in it from those phytates, saponins, other things we can look up. Uh, do we want to look at saponins now? You know, it's you know, it's a toxic compound, and what's weird is in various research, uh, it's used in nutritional use because of the immune response it causes in the body. So that's like one of those things where sometimes when you feed something negative uh, to a human, it can help in some cases. But th- that just shows in studies the actual physical chemical of the saponin is pretty much a poison. So let's go back to the video. Exact same smoothie bowl, you can't, and you know exactly what's in there. Dump those anti-nutrients. So I'm gonna eat this, I got some work to do here on the computer, and then I will meet you guys back here for some lunch. Then we'll try and tick off some more boxes. Okay, before we go into this meal, you. I want you guys to notice all the stuff he adds to make these plant foods more palatable from adding mustard, which is salt, vinegar, from adding coconut aminos, uh, not coconut aminos, uh, soy aminos, which is like salt, sugar, it's like soy sauce. He adds various seasonings and powders, maple syrup, fermented foods like miso and tempeh to make them palatable. You know, avocado, he puts mustard on the bread, like, and he doesn't get sprouted, naturally prepared bread and You know, soaking and traditionally preparing some of these foods can reduce the phytic acid oxalate content. Various negative things in these foods can be reduced by soaking in salted water for several days or fermenting them, but a lot of the foods he should be doing that to, he doesn't. So uh, just keep in mind those things about increasing the palatability so you can choke down these foods. All right, so here we are. I just made lunch and it looks freaking amazing (laughs) super colorful as usual and uh, so what we have here is like a tempeh sandwich and then just like a mixed green salad and I'll show you guys how I made that everything that went into it and then we'll go over the nutrients here in chronometer but first I gotta have a bite I'm so hungry (laughs) are you hungry because you had 86 Mm. grams of sugar for breakfast and threw your blood sugar into a concrete wall 
All right, so you can see on the screen everything that I put into my lunch. Uh, so for this amazing like tempeh sandwich here that I have, uh, I got a big piece of tempeh and then in a container, I mixed up uh, a little marinade for it. So for this, I mixed some miso, some mustard, a bit of maple syrup, some smoked paprika, some garlic powder, some onion powder, and then I mixed all that together. And then I added some water to help everything along. Looks great, man. Come with me. And I'm then I pressed the tempeh into it. So this is key if you don't have a long time to let your tempeh like really marinate. If you like kind of press it into it, it kind of acts like a sponge and soaks up the flavors. So while that was baking, I made a quick little salad and I basically just put a whole bunch of arugula on the plate and then added some chopped bell peppers, some uh, shredded carrots, some red cabbage, which is actually purple. And then on top of it, I just uh, did a little bit of lemon juice and some Bragg's, uh, like that liquid aminos. And it makes, it's like a really, really simple dressing, but uh, it's good enough for a salad for sure. Sometimes I just like the, the uh, lemon on there as well. And then once the tempeh was done and it was nice and crispy, I made some toast. And then uh, on the toast, I put a little bit of yeah, mustard and then uh, some avocado, avocado some cucumber, and uh, put it all together. And here we have that lunch right now. So I've got everything highlighted here that I'm gonna eat for lunch, and that's how Chronometer works. If you wanna see like an individual food, if you just click on it, that will give you the value for just that food. And then if you hold shift and you highlight a bunch of things, it will give you the value for all of those things. So we're gonna highlight everything that I had here for lunch and look at just lunch, and then um, after this, we'll look at just dinner, and then at the end of the day, we'll look over the whole thing as a whole. It's 620 calories that I'm eating here. And you can see that it is full of nutrition, just like my other meal, just like the next one's gonna be. Uh, so lots of B vitamins, tons of vitamin A, lots of vitamin C, lots of vitamin K. What's that coming from? The arugula again. And then uh, you can see the minerals are actually like so really high in this meal, like really, really good. 30% uh, of the calcium in the tempeh. So there's another good source of calcium is tempeh. Lots of iron, where's that coming from? From the tempeh as well. Over 100% of my RDI of iron in this sandwich alone. Pretty amazing. Plant-based for the win. Sure you smell amazing. Uh, and then you can see for yourself the rest of the nutrients there. We're doing really well. Lots of protein. I ain't worried about that. We're making gains here. I'm gonna go enjoy this and I will see you guys back here in a little bit. We'll do the same thing for dinner. Okay, so uh, one, I guess we got to talk about the soy in general. Uh, soy contains, I mean, various, you know, lectins, goitrogens. Uh, I believe there's also the isoflavones and anti-estrogenic properties. And uh, cabbage contains goitrogens as well. And what goitrogens do is they inhibit iodine uptake in the thyroid. You can get goiter. Uh, you could look up like studies of people consuming kale shakes and getting goiter from doing that. I um, mean, we could read a little bit of this. Uh, like, I mean, yeah, soy lectins are digested and inactivated by traditional fermentation or by heat and soy processing. But overall, we got to, you know, there are so many negative things associated with soy from how it's processed with hexane. It's literally a poison food. And it's one of the reasons, you know, America has become so unhealthy is, you know, soy is such an inflammatory food. It does things we haven't really studied and don't know about in the body. It's just, so, it's still literally poison. Like, I, there's a great book. I mean, I, I think I read some of this book, The Whole Soy Story. I don't want to go crazy crazy into detail uh you know we also have you know the lactins which is this uh how you phytohemagglutinin phytohemagglutinin toxic plant protein especially from red kidney beans and and we'll see this occur you know that's why a lot of vegans have a hard time and have to remove certain grains and beans from their diet uh, is there anything else we wanted to talk about i mean guys i can't like i can try to hammer home all these anti-nutrients and stuff but like, at what point do I just have to tell you guys just to go and do the research yourself? There's just, there's multiple anti-nutrients in every single component on his dish. And if the food doesn't have an anti-nutrient, it's usually devoid of plant, you know, it has plant vitamins and minerals that have low bioavailability. And even if it doesn't have that, in the case of avocado, maybe there's only one decently healthy food that he might be having all day. And even then, avocados are, you know, shipped all around the world and not everyone has access to them. Pretty vegan cookie cutter stuff. 
All right, so just like that, dinner is ready. But before I go over that, uh, I know that if I miss these two nutrients, you guys are gonna kill me in the comments. <laughs> so we've got a couple supplements here just to hit all the RDIs. We've got vegan Ooh, vitamin D, and then we've also got B12 here. So those are the only ones that I would say that we need to supplement. And even non-vegans are quite commonly deficient in both of these vitamins. So uh, it's not a vegan specific nutrient that we have to worry about. Both vitamin B12, vitamin D supplement. Yeah, that's what they all say. So I know now that there's a vitamin D3 that I believe they can extract from certain types of mushrooms they grow. And even vegan supplementing B12 can get B12 deficiency. So, you know, in regards to the vitamin D3 thing, I try not to touch on it too much because you can go out in the sun and get vitamin D3. But you do need reasonable amounts of cholesterol, fat in the diet, various other vitamins, vitamin A and K2. So I'd be interested to see the blood levels of a vegan that was deficient in vitamin D3 that took a supplement and saw if they actually rose. Because I know a lot of people take D3 supplements and they don't affect them at all because they don't have the other vitamins they need to metabolize the D3. And and it, this is a laboratory experiment. Like them, especially vitamin D in the winter if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, or I guess maybe in the Southern Hemisphere, really far South. Uh, but if you have four seasons, definitely supplement with vitamin D in the winter. So here we go. And then this is the methyl form of B12, methylcobalamin. I also use cyanocobalamin. I switch back and forth between both chemist? of them. And just a few drops of that. All right, so now that that is out of the way, we get to talk about dinner. So here I have made a nice stir fry. It only took me like 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes at the very I most make to make. New York City super quick minutes, and baby. it is super right, let's, nutritious let's as seven. we're about to find out. So as you can see, I already have all the ingredients for this highlighted. So if you guys wanna make this stir fry, you can. And um, we'll go over all the nutrients. But first, I'll tell you what I did here. So. Uh, really, really simple, just like a black bean and veggie stir fry. So just take a while. I made a coming from from the black beans. So there right, well. we go. Oh, here we go. So I'm assuming I'm not going to learn anything from I this. I promise you, eat healthy, stay positive, all that good stuff. Definitely leave a like if this video is. How can a man have such arrogance and confidence in himself? And I mean, I see myself like this years ago when I used to bodybuild and stuff. You know, when I wasn't as self-aware, when I wasn't as objective, but, you know, people might have different emotions when seeing this. You know, they might think he's arrogant, they might be angry at him, they might be, in my case, upset that people are being misled and they think they're healthy and they're just so stuck up in what they're doing. It's, it's and, you know, I'm always in the, the realm of, you know, am I wrong, you know? And when I bring up these things of bioavailability, saying it's questionable, blah, 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 blah that is me being conservative. Like, I am, it's 100% questionable, and we know for sure he's not getting various minerals, various things, like, he's definitely not getting omega-3s, he's definitely not getting the minerals, the vitamin A bioavailability, I'd be surprised if it was at the end of the day 100% of the RDI, considering the absorption rates, same with vitamin K, you know, at what point is this guy going to see health problems? I don't really know, I don't want to speculate on his drug use, medicine use, I, I mean, I'd have to see his blood work to really speculate further and talk negatively, but it's really unfortunate, guys. You know, we see so many people declining in health on this diet, and I, I felt this was a great thing to do. You know, you guys like the vegan critique videos. They're really popular. Uh, I got to touch on anti-nutrients, and I got to touch on how vegans are so confident in the nutrient density of their diet. I feel like we spoke about a couple different topics today that I would have had to do individual videos on from a vegan critique to going over anti-nutrients to showing how plant bioavailability is questionable. But each of those videos in general, like the anti-nutrient one, do I really want to go in depth on 15 different anti-nutrients? The vitamin availability one, no one's really going to want to see like beta carotene versus vitamin A. It's not an interesting video to me. And people like the vegan critique thing. Uh, so... You know, without going into how ridiculous it is to access all these foods every day, how cookie cutter every vegan diet is too much, um, you know, it's, it's just unfortunate. And hopefully uh, some of these people turn around. And if some of these vegan YouTubers turn around, it's going to be a big switch. I mean, it's starting to happen with some people too, you know. There's going to be a big shift in the community. 
And what's unfortunate is even people on the carnivore diet don't get these vitamins and minerals because they don't consume organ meats, they don't consume fish, they don't consume high vitamin foods. So that's why I'm here, guys, to increase nutrient density in the diet and to get people healthy. And you know, there's very aspects of various other aspects of health that come into consideration here, but you know, diet is kind of really the most important thing that fixes everything. So if you guys would like to support me, please just share the channel. Uh, I don't really have much else to say other than I'm going to try to do some really exciting videos this week for you guys, some popular topics.